Welcome back. You're watching Gravitas. Another attempt by the opposition to impeach the Speaker of the Maldivian Parliament ended in chaos today. The Parliament was locked down by the army and lawmakers were dragged out by force. Opposition leaders claim that they secured That's enough good. votes to impeach Speaker Abdullah Masi. The third attempt at impeachment. Four opposition parties have come together to fight the Amin government and the charges being led by his own brother, Mamoon Abdul Gayoom. But President Abdullah Yameen's party dismissed the impeachment motion even after four of his own lawmakers decided to vote against the party line. President Yameen's government has been accused of embezzlement and rights abuses. Speaker Masi, a key ally of President Yameen, too, faces these charges. So this is what the situation is like in the Maldives. Islamic fundamentalism and Saudi clout. A reportedly corrupt government, murdered bloggers and a popular president who must live in exile. The South Asian island state, Maldives, has been in serious trouble for a while now. Let's revisit the many dangers facing the Maldives, not the least of which is the certainty that all the 1,194 islands comprising the Maldives will be swallowed by the rising seas in less than 50 years from now. But what ails the current administration of President Yameen, at whose orders padlocks were placed on the parliament this morning to block a referendum against the unpopular speaker? We on senior editor Padma Rao brings you this report. An archipelago of 1,192 pristine coral islands a haven of peace and beauty, favoured by young, newly married couples from around the world. But that honeymoon may be over. The Maldives is now said to have become a hotbed of Islamist terrorism, a country from where the highest number of recruits of the Islamic State was drawn, and an increasingly intolerant society in the grips of fundamental Wahhabism. And ruling over it all is a polity reported to be selling the nation state to all and sundry, including and especially Saudi Arabia and China. Since the surprising victory of the Maldivian Democratic Party after three decades of stentorian rule under strongman Maumoon Gayoom in 2008, Maldivians say that the downslide of the idyllic South Asian country has been dismally rapid. There is extreme press censorship, tragically illustrated by the recent murder of a young blogger. The killing was just the latest in a series of incidents of intimidation, harassment and attempts to murder all those who question the authorities. However, more than the big fish of the Maldivian political firmament, it is nature itself which poses the biggest threat to the fragile archipelago. Global warming is causing the oceans to rise and it is for certain that the pristine Maldives will be submerged by the sea in 50 years. A fact that exiled former President Mohammed Nasheed stresses with considerable urgency. There is no reversing in, uh, with respect to the Maldives. Uh, um, the, the, the planet is going to be heated by two degrees uh, because we already have 400 parts per million of carbon in our atmosphere um, and therefore the planet is heating. And we can see that our coral is bleaching, the seas are rising, the, the uh, glaciers are melting. Um, and we can see that. The science is sorted. It's very obvious. Uh, you can't cut a deal with physics. You can't negotiate with the laws of science. Uh, uh, and it's, it's madness to think that uh, we can actually find other solutions. No, we can't. The former journalist Mohammed Nasheed made history by winning the country's first democratically conducted election, beating three-decade-long President Gayoom, whom many criticize for ruling the island nation with an iron fist and assuming absolute powers. But in four years, a familiar pattern had set in. Political coteries, hungry to seize power and obliterate any form of democracy in the Islamic Republic, ensured Nasheed's arrest with trumped-up charges. With help of India and other countries, Nasheed left the country on medical grounds to exile in the United Kingdom. There, he dreams of returning to the Maldives and restoring democracy in his country. But if the country's majority faith is attracting investors in religion, so to speak, the Maldives' strategic location at the crossroads of shipping lanes traversed by oil tankers from east to west is drawing attention of a different kind. From China, which has earmarked the Maldives as one of its many strategic partners on its One Belt, One Road initiative. 
and it's certainly not just an idyllic holiday that the Chinese are after. We've signed into uh, the Chinese maritime silk route. President Yamin had signed into it. And again, they want to uh, safeguard and they want to own shipping routes and trade routes. And again, um, our strategic location means that therefore they, have, they must have clout in the Maldives. Um, they've already, as you mentioned, bought a number of islands. Um, and they are in the process of uh, establishing strategic infrastructure on these islands. Uh, this is very, very unfortunate, uh, but this is happening at a rapid speed. Um, and therefore, we must be very, very mindful of what's going on. Big neighbour India has always come to the rescue of the Maldives when its governments beckoned. But aware of the criticism often heard in the region of India's big brotherly ways, New Delhi has carefully kept out of the island nation's internal affairs. But given Saudi clout, Chinese ambition and the seeming ruthlessness of the Maldivian ruling classes, it may be time that New Delhi move beyond building the Mir Hospital, the Odd Road and the Joint Naval Band Concert. If the seas lapping India's shores are to be guarded against incursions by states that do not belong to the Indian Ocean Rim, it is time for India to take the lead before the tide turns irreversibly. Padma Rao. And joining us this evening, Ahmed Malouf, MP for the Galulu South constituency, joining us from the Maldives this evening. Also with us from Sri Lanka, Mohammad Nasheed, former president of the Maldives, one of the founders of the Maldivian Democratic Party. Good evening to both of you. Mr. Malouf, to you first. What happened today? Can you describe for us and what do you make of these developments? Right, I'm told we'll reconnect with Ahmed Malouf. Uh, Mohammed Nasheed, former president of the Maldives, is also with us on the phone line. Thank you for being uh, on Gravitas, uh, Mr. Nasheed. We spoke to you on Friday. We discussed what was expected and... Uh, Sure enough, playing by the script, once again we've seen a repeat of March. Um, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's very unfortunate uh, what is unfolding in the politics now. Uh, the military has taken over the parliament. Uh, the parliament Italians were due to deliberate upon a no-confidence motion um, on the speaker. Uh, but uh, the chief uh, of the defense force because the uh, parliament surrounded by the soldiers and then later on stormed into uh, the parliament. Um, and then uh, they arrested a number of parliamentarians um, and also uh, evicted um, everyone else who, was, who were in the house. Uh, they, the military still continues to occupy the parliament. Reconnect with you, uh, uh, Mr. Nasheed. The, the audio is not very clear, but uh, this is what has happened today. The army, under uh, orders from the president, clamped down on the parliament uh, and uh, locked it because parliamentarians, mostly the opposition parties who now have an, uh, have an upper hand in the House, were trying to impeach the speaker, and that would have meant a major blow to the current president. And these are images from earlier today. Remember, uh, India has been watching this situation very, very closely because Maldives has become strategically very significant over the past few months with China investing millions in this region, engaged in uh, construction projects. And Maldives has, has given away many strategically located islands and navigation points to China and has become a very, very important part of its Belt and Road Initiative. The opposition led by Mohammed Nasheed has said that if they came to power, they're going to scrap all the China projects. Easier said than done, but nonetheless a start. India has been watching these developments with caution. I'm told Mohammed Nasheed is back with us. Mr. Nasheed, do we know who's in charge of the army? Who's taking these decisions right now? And what are the opposition's options now?
We'll try and reconnect with them. We're going to take a short break here. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about what's happening in Israel. Jerusalem is on the boil. The Arab League says Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is playing with fire. We tell you why the placing of metal detectors outside a mosque has sparked the worst violence in years.